Greetings radio people, welcome once more back to my shack. I've had quite a few questions recently about radio control, cat control, macros, all of these kind of questions, primarily to do with the TS-890. Now I use Logger32 as my day-to-day -day go to logging program and in Logger32 I've got all sorts of complex macros set up for the TS-890. A lot of people say, well I don't run Logger32, I run Ham Radio Deluxe. How do I do it with that? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the mic, the, um, the camera that's pointing at me right now, point it at my rig, show you a few examples in Logger32, open up Ham Radio Deluxe, port a few to there, show you how the radio responds, and see if that helps. So before we dive into some practical examples, let's just cover the real underlying basics of this. So all modern rigs have what's called CAT control. CAT stands for Computer Aided Transceiver. I believe, I may be wrong, that Yesu introduced this with their FT-1000 or FT-990 many, many years ago. The command set then was very limited. You could do a few bits and bobs, but that was the first time this happened in the ham radio world. I think. But these days, most, if not all, modern rigs contain a very, very comprehensive set of cat commands. Pretty much everything you can do through the menu system or through knobs or buttons on the front panel, you can do using computer control instead, which means you can set up strings of commands for fairly complex radio changes that you can execute with a single mouse click. That's the beauty of it. And the other advantage for an idiot like me is that when I figure out how I want to set my radio up for a particular mode, that might mean 20 or 30 different settings. I'm not capable of remembering that. So once I've figured it out once and I've written it in a macro, then I can repeat it over and over and over. In the case of Kenwood, they provide a separate manual, which is the manual you'll see on the screen, which details every one of the cap commands that you can use to control your radio. Now, if we were to take a very simple example, let me just blow this up a little bit to make it a bit bigger. So the example we're going to talk about just very quickly is this one here. The command is AP0. So the command AP0 controls the audio peak filter in CW mode. If I send a command to my radio that goes AP01, that switches the audio peak filter off. If I send the command AP02, that switches the audio peak filter on. It's exactly the same as pressing the button on the front of the radio to switch it on and off, but I'm doing it by sending a piece of information to the radio down a bit of electrical string rather than physically pressing the button. The effect is identical. That's the important thing to understand. It doesn't do anything different to the button. It's just a different way of executing that command. So this manual contains many, many, many pages detailing all of the different commands you can use to access menu functions and the various features and functions of the radio. So what we'll do now is show you a practical example in Logger32 and then move on to show you that in Ham Radio Deluxe. So what you're looking at now is my Logger32 basic screen. There's a whole bunch of stuff which I've covered in separate videos. Um, but the main window of interest is this one here, which I'll wiggle around here. This is called the radio control uh, window. Now, each one of these buttons that you can see, uh, I'm, I'm wiggling my mouse over at the moment. Each one of these is a macro underneath that, which is configurable by the user. But let me give you a quick example. So, I mean, this TS-890 of mine covers four meters, but there's no button on the front panel to set it. So if I just click this here, you'll see that the radio switches to four meters. It also sets up CW, it switches on various other filters and all sorts of other things. But that set the rig exactly how I want it set up for four meters. Ditto, if I want to go back to 40 meters CW, I just click this button here. Now, each one of these macros has got a set of commands behind it. So if I right click, it brings up the list of commands. Now, in Logger32, the command itself sits here in between the dollar command and the dollar sign. Now just note that if you were doing something for ICOM, you'd have to use the dollar hex command instruction. 
But each of these, so FA, for example, the command that you can see highlighted there, you would find that in the Kenwood command manual that we just saw, and FA sets the frequency of VFO A. And then the syntax is such that this is the 7280 or whatever it might be, 70028. So that's the frequency that this sets. I've also set it up to make sure I'm not in split. I'm in CW mode. I've got break in selected. I've got filter B, switch on the band scope, no waterfall, etc., etc., etc. So the very complex way that I like the rig configured in CW on four meters is now configured as a single button click within my logging software. So when I want to go to four meters, I just click this button here and Bob is indeed your uncle. Now let's have another look at something slightly more complex. So I use my TS890 to drive a transverter for the uplink to the Q0100 satellite. Now again, each one of these commands you'll see here you will find in the Kenwood command reference. So what I'm doing here, I'm setting up operating mode of VFOB, VFOA, I'm setting the frequency, I'm setting the transverter offset, switching on transverter mode, blah, 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 long list of commands that I want. But the net result is when I click this button here, My radio now displays an operating frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. It's actually 28 megahertz, but that's the now configured in transverter mode for me to be able to use that with my transverter for the uplink to Q0100. I don't need to remember all of the buttons and the sequence of events that I need to do to set that up. I just click once. And then I've got another macro here which takes me back to where I was before. So that undoes all of the transverter stuff. And if I then decided I wanted 40 meters, I'd just click that one and I'm back on 40 meters CW. That's why I love macros. So let's take this example, this Q0100 that we've got here. So what I've done is I've copied the commands out of my macro here. So this list of commands here, I've copied into here. These are the commands I use to switch it on. And these uh, up here, these are the commands I use to switch it on, the transverter mode. And these are the commands I use to switch it off. So let's try and replicate that in Ham Radio Deluxe. It's not a piece of software I use, but let's have a bash. So here's Ham Radio Deluxe connected to my TS890. As I explained, I don't really use this software, so it's not configured anything other than straight out the box. In fact, I had to reinstall it. I haven't got it installed, so I installed it, found my license, um, set up the uh, COM port and I've got it talking to my TS-890. Now what I found is so what we were the objective the objective here was to try and replicate these macros so this is the switch on transverter macro and this is the switch off transverter macro that I've got in Logger32. So what I found is if I go to the macros menu and the cat command manager, what I can do here is I can create new or edit existing. Now I've already set them up um, to make sure I got it right. But what you would do, you'd say new, you give it a, a title and then each of the commands that you want. So for example, if we wanted OM02 or um, uh, AP01 or whatever it might be, you'd list these commands in here each one on a separate line and so it would go on like that now what I've done I've set up my transverter um, so I've basically taken each of the commands between the dollar command and the dollar if you remember that's log of 32 syntax this part here is the uh, actual cap command now the semicolon it says in the manual you don't need to put that in here because it's added automatically so each of the commands from my macro I've listed on a separate line in here and I've set that up now I've actually set up four macros there's one to switch on the transverter one to switch off and then I've done some very simple macros to set CW mode and USB mode so once you've set them up and then you go over here to the macros part of this menu structure here and you'll see that those four macros that I've created now appear here and if I click on this Guess what happens?
This seems a little bit slower. Each command seems to have a bit of a gap between it, but it has basically configured the rig exactly the same as the one in Logger 32. So this is the transverter off. And then I've done some simple ones, one to set CW mode, and one to set sideband mode. So proof is in the pudding. You can clearly do exactly the same thing as I'm doing in Logger32 in Ham Radio Deluxe. So if you've got a sequence of commands that you want to do and remember and set up to do time and time again, find them in the, um, in the manual, put them into a macro, and once again, Bob will be your uncle. I hope you found this useful. Any questions, please stick them in the comments. I'll do my very best to answer them. And if, as ever, if you like what I'm up to, please subscribe to the channel. I would very, very much appreciate your support. Take care. See you next time.